compliance inspections to ensure that businesses are compliant with Consumer Protection Act and other relevant legislation. The department further inspected 107 businesses for compliance with consumer protection legislation. An amount of around 848 million was retrieved on behalf of consumers. This is an amount that was put back into the pockets of consumers due to the intervention of the consumer affairs offices. The consumer affairs court has been operational during this financial year and has played a significant role as businesses become more compliant with the office rulings. The department, through its liquor board, adjudicated 895 applications and inspected a total of 4,210 4, liquor outlets during routine and joint compliance enforcement inspections. During renewal of liquor licenses, the department uncovered fraudulent and they were reported accordingly to the board and authorities. The department has presented the Business Licensing Act to 15 local municipalities. The remaining three municipalities will be finalized by end of May. Our department, Honorable Speaker, conducted 107 public awareness workshops on the new business acts throughout the province. The department will, in the current financial year, operationalize the Business License Act number three of 2019. Honorable Speaker, in 2021-2022 financial year, the department undertook a task to identify the types of business operating in the province, the data for all businesses, liquor outlets, and the consumer-related issues was collected per local municipality. District municipalities then consolidated to the provincial database. The aim of this exercise is to have a provincial database of different types of businesses, and the department is now in the process of finalizing the provincial database. This necessary work has greatly assisted in ensuring the prevention of illegal business operation. Honorable Speaker, in terms of the gambling board, the, the board issued six new sites operator license, which created unemployment to eight uh, people in partnership with South African police. We have ensured that illegal gambling machines are removed from communities, and to date, 21 gambling machines were confiscated, and the operators given administration fines. Despite the impact of COVID-19 on the industry, majority of licenses are now operating at pre-COVID revenue levels. On our speaker, in an effort to expand offering, the fifth casino license has been successfully reallocated to the Northwest province, and this we have shared with the province before that we won following the positive outcome of the Constitutional Court. This has progressed to the gambling board being at the point of sourcing a service provider to conduct a feasibility study for the placement of the casino. The outcome of the feasibility study will advise the province where best the fifth casino license is to be located. In terms of the environmental services, honorable speaker, progress on the implementation of a gazetted environmental implementation plan 2020-2025 was monitored and reported on through the 2021 annual compliance report. The department supported through imaging, supported two imaging nurseries in Mukwasi and provided guiding tools and seedling, mass cleaning campaigns were conducted in Vormaranstadt uh, with more than 100 willy beings being donated. Furthermore, honorable speaker, the department donated fruit trees and indigenous trees to those indigenous indigenous families. Speak boom trees, were donated in Tabanis to sequestrate carbon emissions. Environmental services initiated and spearheaded the Keep Mahiken Clean project together with Mahiken Municipality and Ngagamudire Mulema District Municipality. Environmental services have supported the Devil's Claw project to cultivate in preparation of planting Devil's Claw. Uh, the project was 100% effective in finalizing environmental authorization, waste management license, and atmospheric emission licenses within legislated timeframes. More inspections were conducted and enforcement action undertaken resulting in more feasibility of environmental management inspectors, compliance monitoring and enforcement, and environmental legislation. Honorable Speaker, despite all challenges faced by our entities, Parks Board managed to reduce poaching of rhinos in the, 
in the parks that are hosting rhinos. The, pa the board started with maintenance of the warning in Pilanesbeck Mahikeng Nature Reserve and Ebozalano Nature Res Reserve, respectively. The Northwest Parks Board further responded by designating another five field rangers as environmental management inspectors at, at Mulemani Eye Nature Reserve. A South African court has handed down FT 85 year prison sentence to three convicted Mozambican rhino poachers. It was the heaviest sentence ever handed down for rhino poaching in the country. Honorable Speaker, these crimin criminals were sentenced in the Mohwasi Criminal Court for the brutal killing and dehoning of three rhinos at Pilanis Bank Nature Reserve in, in July 2018. Another threat is the spread of the alien and invasive plant species. These are intensive effort, there are intensive efforts in Molemane Eye Nature Reserve, Volversprayed Nature Reserve, Babonspan Nature Reserve, Fal Falcop, Botsalano, and Pilanesbeck Nature Reserve to clear and control alien and invasive species. These efforts are ongoing and will be intensified in the current financial year. Honorable Speaker, the clearing of invasive indigenous species in Madikwe Nature Reserve and Pilanesbeck through assistance from partners, or partner organization resulted in vast areas cleared and their vegetation structure changed to improve habitat for plant game species. Job opportunities are created through fixed term contracts, through programs such as working on fire ecosystems, environmental monitors, tourism monitors, wetlands and procurement. Honorable Speaker, the, so the social ecology unit needs to focus on interaction between the board and communities in the province, especially those around our parks. The Education for Sustainable Development continued with interaction and conducted an out-of-school youth camp for youth in Boscop Dam Nature Reserve. Honorable Speaker, the Junior Ranger Mahikeng High School Boys Camp in collaboration with SA Hunters and Game Conservation Association was held in November 2021. A lecture on saving water was held at Khaisi um, Rael Primary School where 120 learners were present. The Environmental Education Educators Camp was also presented at Falcop Dam Nature Reserve, where 100 environmental education educators were uh, targeted, and issues of the school curriculum, climate change, education for sustainable development, and kids and parks program were taught. The board also hosted the people and parks dialogue at Sundown Country Estate, which was attended by 60 members of the Communal Property Association in the Northwest. Honorable Speaker, Parks Board assisted in the ecological assessment and evaluation of community property to, con to, to convert them to wildlife-related land used practices or conservation areas. The board held a 10-day training workshop on reed weaving for SMMEs who are selling rooms on the side of the road next to Molemane Eye Nature Reserve. They, their intention was to introduce the new skills that will diversify their pro products by using grid to wave laundry, laundry basket, reed mats, blinds, and chairs. The board furthermore conducted an awareness creation on sustainable harvesting of medicinal plant conservation and their relative relation to livelihoods. Honorable Speaker, Parks Board is in the process of finalizing its commercialization strategy for protected areas in the province. The, ob the objective of the strategy is to improve income generation to the Parks Board and also to encourage inclusive participation in economic opportunities in the parks. And we all know the challenges that financially this entity is facing. In terms of tourism, Honorable Speaker, a total of 265 Tourism SMMEs benefited from the relief fund, while 80 tour guides were assisted through tourism guide fund, both set by the National Department of Tourism. In order to ensure compliance with basic business statutory requirements, to this end, 100 tourism facility sites were inspected to check compliance with all COVID-19 regulation, 
a total of 178 tourist guides were inspected throughout the province and 29 new tourist guides were registered. The department concluded three cultural content development workshops for tourist guide sector at Naga Mudirimulema, Dr. Rutsi Kutsimutsi Mumpati, and Dr. Kenneth Gawunda regime. The department successfully held a well-attended International Tourist Guides Day celebration in the province. The department supported 57 emerging tourism establishment with grading interventions. Honorable Speaker, the tourism industry comes out of a very difficult time and um, environment in terms of the tourism sector. This is as a result of the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which has had a very devastating impact on the performance of the industry. The underperformance has been characterized by low visitors numbers, international and local, and locally closure of establishments, leading to job losses, low tourism activities, and related services. Due to, to the fact that tourism is a very resilient sector, there is a countrywide agreed upon action plan to resuscitate and rejuvenate the industry across the industry value chain. It is against this background that the Northwest province, we will need to increase or enhance our effort to reposition Northwest tourism as a, as a tourism destination preferred of choice, so as to ensure the savings of lost jobs and increased number of visitation to the province to generate the number of needed revenue for the destination and to contribute to the country's GDP. The Northwest Tourism Board has developed a new destination marketing strategy that has been widely consulted with the industry players as well as other stakeholders. The strategy resonates with the widely agreed upon tourism recovery plan to rejuvenate the sector after it, after it was adversely affected by the pandemic. Over and above this, there has been constant budget cuts that have had a huge impact on other marketing activities. The bloom of dam infrastructure project has been significant, has registered significant progress with the final phase, including the construction of the 12 chalets and upgrading of entrance gate. It is estimated that the full project will be completed by the end of the financial year 2022-2023. Honorable Speaker, the novel coronavirus outbreak has had devastating impact in the tourism sector as we reiterated earlier. The Northwest province experienced a drop of 76.4% in international tourist arrivals and 33% drop in domestic ar arrivals. The, the, the ripple effects is associated in associated economic activities such as transport, catering, accommodation cannot be underemphasized. In a path to recovery for the industry, the Northwest Tourism Board has uh, concluded and consulted, as we stated earlier. Honorable Speaker, I want to submit to this August House that the department is aware and deeply concerned about the underperforming uh, entities, state-owned entities such as the Northwest Development Corporation, the Golden Leopard Resort, and the Northwest Parks Board. In rebuilding the entities, a turnaround strategy, revenue enhancement strategy, and commercialization strategy, particularly for the Parks Board, are being developed and uh, to drive the entity to deliver on their mandate effectively and efficiently. It cannot be that uh, scarce financial resources be annually transferred to this underperforming entities as a form of, of bailout, or as a form of bailout. There is no value for money. So there's a need for us to rethink our strategies to, to bring these entities to their former glory. In terms of job creation, Honorable Speaker, in 2021-2022 financial year, the department undertook a task to identify the types of business operating in the province, as stated earlier in the business regulation a, 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 a feedback. To this end, 144 data capturers were appointed on the fixed term contract, which concluded in end of February 2022. And we intend to extend uh, this contract of uh, data capturers to conclude the outstanding work. This, 
we are proud to inform the August House of the successful pilot of the expanded public works pro program in the tourism and hospitality placement initiative in which 100 youth were appointed and placed in various tourism establishment. Honorable Speaker, this integrated skills transfer in the industry will ensure that youth are given multiple avenues of opportunities as skills are contributed to vibrant sector. The department continued to support the implementation of the RWS program remediation program through chairing the quarterly RWS program coordinating committee meetings and by appointing 15 EPWP workers to assist with the cleaning and cleaning of debris around the dam. 250 jobs opportunities were created through the EPWP within the environmental sector, Honorable Speaker. The, the opportunities aim to address the various needs and requirement on management issues such as infrastructure maintenance, ecological man management, cleaning services, fire management, monitoring services, amongst others. Through this program, we managed to create and sustain a total of 400 temporary and permanent jobs. Honorable Speaker, in the context of the district development model, the department is working closely with the development finance institutions in the province to support businesses in the province. We acknowledge our close collaboration with the following financial institution, Industrial Development Corporation, National Empowerment Fund, Land Bank, National Youth Development Agency, Small Enterprise Agency, and, sm and Small Enterprise Funding Agency, and Productivity SA. We wish to also undertake a mammal with this, what we have outlined. We wish to table that the department is allocated 958.958,259 million rands in 2022-2023 financial year. In terms of administration, it's 209 million. In terms of integrated economic services, 87 million. Trade and sector development, 82 million. Business regulation and governance, 116 million. Economic planning, 15 million. Environmental services, 283 million. Tourism, 158 million. And in terms of 18 entities, we will, we will transfer about 38.5 of our allocation, which will amount to 369. Uh, 548 million to entities. Northwest Development Corporation, 70, 71 million. Northwest Development, the Northwest Gambling Board, 76 million. Northwest Parks Board, 127 million. Northwest Tourism Board, 95, 94 million. In terms of our plans, uh, Honorable Speaker, as stated in our budget, and earlier we wish to reiterate that the department. Um, is far ahead in terms of implementing and operationalize the district development model. The department has programs, has programs, some of which are implemented with other stakeholders like local municipalities, CEDA, and entities in the province. And projects that will be implemented include the heritage site infrastructure project through the Independent Development Trust will be implemented with a budget allocation of 35 million with, will be implemented in Greater Tawung, Dr. RSM. The department will be completing all the outstanding infrastructure project through the in Independent Development Trust to the tune of 32 million in Tawung Hotel and Okni Hotel. The business regulation program, advisory program, with a budget allocation of 10 million will be rolled out in Mahikent, and Lexdorp, Freiburg, and Rustenburg, targeting 200 young people. Development and enterprise support uh, centers with an allocation budget of two million will be implemented in Muretele, Ratro Ukarisanomolopo, and Moses Kotani. Establishment and support of incubation centers program with a budget of 12 million will be implemented in Okni, Tawung, Freiburg, and Mohwasi and Mahikeng. A provincial office aimed at establishing and implementing an interactive marketing online platform will set aside my will set up in Mafikeng to the will be set up in Mafikeng to a tune of 1.1 million. Trade market, as we stated above, uh, in two districts of Ngaka and Dr. Ruth Musurumutsi Mumpati, an empowerment fund to support startups and expansion of SMEs and co cooperatives 
in all four districts is allocated an amount of 15 million. Capacity building to empower LED officials will be implemented in all 18 municipalities for an allocation of 1.5 million. The department will in intervene with business turnaround interventions targeting 10 distressed businesses at a budget of 10 million. The department will be establishing township automotive hubs in Ngakamudirimulemga and Dr. Ruth Zuhumutimunpati to the tune of 3 million. In addressing unemployment, particularly amongst youth, women, and, children, and people with disability, the department, together with entities, will create 2,500 jobs in the current financial year. The province will work with the Department of Trade and, and Industry and Competition to locate investors who are ready to start operating in the SEZ. A total of 41.4 million is allocated for implementation of the SEZ. The department will coordinate and host the Provincial Job Summit as pronounced by the Premier in the State of the Province address on the 28th to the 29th July 2022. Honorable uh, Speaker, the Job uh, Summit is to find ways to grow the economy and create sustainable jobs. Honorable Speaker, as the world experiences severe extreme climate condition, biodiversity is bound to be affected. It is within that context that we need to collectively work on climate change mitigation. Climate change damages important infrastructure that support economic growth and development. The recent natural disasters in Delpan and Ratlo showed that our province is not immune to the effects of climate change. The findings of the scientific study conducted by the Department on Delpan disaster indicated that the area that was affected by the floods not long is a wet land and it's not suitable for human settlement, or was not suitable for human settlement. It is against this background that I call on all sister department and development agencies to find a long-lasting solution to the problems of, 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 of Delpan. Honorable Speaker, that is why in this financial didact we'll be re reviewing its climate change response strategy and implementation plan in 2020, and we develop by developing this strategy and plan. The process was a collaborative project with the National Department of Forestry, Fishery, and the German Development Agency. Key deliverables from the collaboration effort will be an updated provincial vulnerability and climate change risk assessment, a provincial greenhouse gas emission inventory, a climate change response strategy and implementation plan recovering both mitigation, covering both mitigation and, and adaptation. Honorable Speaker, the department is planning to conduct four significant biodiversity uh, economy initiatives, namely Tswane Safaris, uh, Tswanyane Safaris um, with um, Tswane CPA Game Farm, another one with Bauru Tibor Mokata CPA Game Farm, uh, and another one with let, land uh, post restitution project, redistribution project in the Olive and Kloof game farm, the Mebalayarona transformation wildlife auction, amongst others. Honorable Speaker, in this current financial year, the to department conclude, will oversee the finalization of the environmental impact assessment and issuing of waste management atmospheric emission, emission license within legislated uh, timelines. Honorable Speaker, um, enforcement of compliance on environmental matters cannot be overemphasized. Not long ago, we had to under intervene after Theresa Mine failed to comply with its license condition on environmental management. We held a series of meetings with various stakeholders after receiving complaints for, from communities about the noise blasting and other health hazards which are experienced by communities that reside near Teresa mine, Mining Operation. Honorable Speaker, I wish to, to take this opportunity to thank the stewardship of the Honorable Premier Mape, the wise council of colleagues in the Executive Council, the portfolio committee led by the chairperson, Honorable Linkopane, my family, chairpersons and board members of entities and CEOs, management and staff of the department and the HOD, as well as the staff in my office uh, for, their, for their support commitments towards realization of a pragmatic vision that we have shared with you today. 
Moreover, I want to thank, to thank my organization, the African National Congress, thank you very much, and the people of the province, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable MEC. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Members. I will now call on the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Environment, on Economic Development, Environment, Conservation and Tourism, Honorable Lung